we all have a story about ourselves and one of the things that's really important to remember about this story we have it's it's not so much a story about our lives but it's a story about our identity it's a story about how we see ourselves because in the story of our own life there's a central character and we play that central character in this story and the story we tell about that character, about the identity of that character is very important. Now one of the things that's useful to know is that the story doesn't change itself. It needs to be proactively worked on. So how do we do that? How do we get to work on this story? Because if the story is very important, it's fundamental to the experiences we have and it doesn't change itself, but we're going to need to do proactive work to change that story, to work on it. And there's two aspects to it, in my opinion. The first is to debunk the existing story, if it's a story that doesn't work, if it's a story that doesn't seem to be facilitating peace and happiness in our lives. So that's a big part of it, right? To debunk the existing story, the story of the person who isn't good enough, who struggles, who fails to connect with people, who doesn't have a purpose, doesn't have a place in their life. That needs to be debunked, and that's the proactive aspect of working on it, right? And that's quite challenging to do that. That, that aspect of this work really comes into awareness to our tr through the triggers we have in life. Because most of the time that story, it's such a negative story we have about ourselves and our identity that we don't want to look at it and we push it out of awareness we hold it down and we don't we don't, we don't want to consciously look at it but the triggers that we experience and those emotions those strong emotions that come with those triggers that's coming from that pre-existing old story that's there so the first part of the work that we do to change the story is to debunk the old story and that's done through how do we debunk anything we have to ask serious questions of that story. We have to find evidence to the contrary that undermines the original story. And because that part of our work is quite challenging and it involves triggers, and there's nothing we can do to avoid triggers, try as we might, life is the teacher and it is here to, it's actually a good thing to get triggered. Now it's a good thing to get triggered and work on the trigger and use the trigger to change the story it's not such a good thing if we need to get triggered again and again and again before we can actually get the benefits of the trigger so I certainly don't want you to feel like oh it's great I'm getting triggered about the same thing again and again that may happen but it's important to know that the trigger is an opportunity to make a change so ideally we don't have to go through the triggers too too often but when they come up it's absolutely an opportunity so never see it as a bad thing although it's always painful when we get triggered by something. So we, got, we get to work debunking this pre-existing story that's there, and that's the way I, I see it, because that's so challenging to do that. It's quite intense work. That's about 20% of our work. The other 80%, as I see it, is to focus on the new story about the central character in the story, the identity. So 80%, and that's focusing on this new story. And that new story is going to be shaped primarily through what you've done and the questioning and the inquiry of the old story. You're going to find that that old story is completely contrary to reality. And the, in fact, the opposite of that old story is the truth. And to find that truth, the new story, the opposite of the old story, requires work, requires inqui inquiry, it's challenging. So it's hard-earned. It's a hard-earned perspective you, you, are, you get for yourself. So in order to not lose touch with that, the 80% of our work is going to be to keep remembering what we've learned in inquiry, to keep focusing on it, to, to sit with it, to start living with that new story. Maybe the word story doesn't do it justice. In my opinion, it's the truth of who you are. To sit with the truth of who you are, ultimately, your identity. 
And I, again, I use the word identity because it's not so much a story about um, the things you do in your life or what's happening in your life. It's a story about who you are fundamentally as a person in the story. I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. So 20% of our work is about inquiry. It's questioning. It's challenging the pre-existing narrative. And then 80% of our time is going to be spent focusing on what we've learned in that and also just getting into not just necessarily through inquiry, but the new story is 80% focusing on the new story is going to be about what makes you feel alive, what makes you feel good about yourself. Searching for something that resonates within you and if it makes you feel good and if it makes you feel at peace, it makes you feel positive, motivated, um, as if you have a purpose. What's happening there is you're resonating with something that's close to the truth, or certainly a lot closer to the truth. So that is also a way to do it, not necessarily just through inquiry, but, but through attuning to what makes you feel good. That is the way that we do that. So this is just a short video. It's essential, because if you do one without the other, if you just focus on the positive story that you feel is helpful, that's good. But the problem with that though, and many people used to do this in the early stages of like the positive thinking movement, they would just focus and say affirmations again and again. And the idea was that, you know, if they just keep focusing on that, that it will improve their life. Now it does help. The problem is though, if the pre-existing story is there and it's kind of still being repressed and held out of awareness, you're actually creating this cognitive dissonance within yourself where one part of you is focusing on this new positive story and the old one is still there. And so there's this conflict that builds. So it actually, I think, the positive thinking movement was actually potentially, although coming from a good place, was potentially a backward step in some ways because it involved repression or trying to just bulldoze the old story out of, out of the way. So we give ourselves space here to be triggered. We become sort of accepting of the trigger. And in that acceptance of it, we're like, okay, I'm going to sit with this. I'm going to really sit and give it space and then in that space I'm going to really start to question it once I've figured out what it's really saying to me. It's not easy to find out what that old story is, especially about your identity, your core identity, who I am, I'm not good enough, there's something wrong with me, all those things. So ideally we're going to do both of these things, the inquiry and the focusing on what we want the identity to be, the, the truth of our identity. And I think with that combination, it's something like 80-20. Because I've seen it also where people spend a lot of their time in inquiry, the majority. And personally, I think, I think that's okay in phases of life where you do deep dives into inquiry and you're inquiring and inquiring all the time. But that is intense. It's intense to do that level of inquiry for a very long period of time. To me, it's a more balanced approach to do inquiry with the focusing on what you've discovered in inquiry. And uh, I think it's a more it's sort of a natural process and it's more um, easily integrated into our daily lives to do that. So just a few thoughts. Keep it in mind, if you're doing inner work on yourself, you're trying to work on your story and your identity and let go of old painful narratives about your identity or your life, Keep in mind that there's a balance to be found between working on inquiry and focusing on the truth of who you are. Hope you found that useful, maybe insightful, and um, any thoughts or feedback, I always read the comments, so feel free to leave them below. Take care of yourself, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye-bye.